On the Day of Judgment, in Sahih Muslim and similar in Tirmidhi, three people will be brought. A scholar, a alim, a charitable giver, mutasaddiq, and a shaheed, a martyr, a person who died in the cause of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge the alim. He will ask him, I gave you knowledge. How did you use this knowledge? The alim will reply, Rabbi, my Lord, I taught this knowledge seeking your pleasure. Allah will say, You are lying. Gadabt. And when the angels hear this, they reply, You are lying. The angels say it because they know that whatever Allah says is the ultimate truth. Allah will then say, You only taught this knowledge so that people can praise you and say, MashaAllah, what a knowledgeable alim. Let us put him in the front rows. Let us favor him by honoring him first. Let us give him food before others. Let us put him in our expensive cars. Let us give him from ourselves everything. Let us call him this and honor him in that way. And this is what you did it for. You have received what you intended for. You have received what you intended for. Allahu Akbar, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. A alim who thousands, even millions of people in the world started to pray because of him, knew how to pay their zakat because of him, gave da'wah because of him or her. People have saved themselves from hellfire because of this alim, what they taught them. He will. Be called a liar because of something that was inside, which only Allah knew. A alim can be like that. Yes. Even an alim can be that. Allah does say in the Quran, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً It's a possibility that some people will be brought on the day of judgment and they have done so much work more than anyone. And then we will make it as if it was haba and manfura, just dust in the wind. We ask Allah to save us from this. Then the mutasaddiq will be brought. The one who gave charity, wealthy, 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 rich in money. What did you do with the wealth that I gave you? The rizq. And he will say, Rabbi, I gave it in charity to benefit the people. I gave it to the poor and I gave it to the needy and I gave it to the orphans and the widows and I gave it to the family that was in need and I gave it into an event which taught people and I gave it to educational institutions and I gave it to the printing company to print Qur'ans for da'wah and I gave it and I gave it to... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, why did you do that? He says, I gave it in order to please you, Ya Allah. Allah will say, Bal kathabt. You are lying. And the angels will reply, You are lying. And then Allah will say, You donated this wealth which I gave you in order for people to call you a charitable person. And so your name can last after your death as being a charitable person. A generous man. And because you intended that, you have received. Today you have nothing with us. Then the shaheed will be brought. This is the person who gave his life or her life away. Allah will ask that person, what did you do with the body I gave you? And he or she will say, I fought in your cause. I died in your cause. I stood up for the truth in your cause against the, oppress the oppressive ones. And so I am a shaheed. Allah will say, you are lying. And the angels will repeat, echoing, you are lying. Allah will say, you only did that so that people can call you a hero. 
and build monuments out of you and you have received that which you intended. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was speaking to Mu'adh radiyallahu anhu in this hadith. He was sitting in front of him and he grabbed Mu'adh's knee and shook it like something. He wanted him to pay extra attention, something very serious. Ya Mu'adh! These are the first three people with whom Allah shall ignite hellfire with. And Why? Just because of a secret which existed inside of them. It was their heart, their objective, their priority, their intention was something of this world rather than Allah.